right, so we are now going to walk through the process of doing the same calibration but using the XX, uh, MSA XS Connect app. Um, first thing you want to do on your phone here um, is turn off your uh, timeout screen. Uh, if your screen times out during the process, you can get a failure. So um, on the iPhone, it's going to be under uh, let's see, display and brightness. Um, and I already have mine off so auto lock typically I have it to 30 seconds uh, right now I have it off for this process so I'm going to open the Excess Connect app it's going to look for any instruments so if you have uh, multiple instru instruments that are close together you may see multiple instruments come up you'll want to know which one you're selecting um, it's going to show you on the transmitter once you connect that you're connected it's not going to show us here but when you connect to an instrument the first time it's going to ask for a code you're going to get that code off your transmitter um, it's going to say hit any button to continue, you just hit one of the buttons on the transmitter then it's going to give you a code. Um, today it's not going to do that because I've already connected to this instrument. So it's already connected and it's going to let us go through the menus. So uh, previously we were talking about um, how this uh, sensor setting was changed to 29. Um, you can see where the span value says 25 now. I went and changed that back but say you wanted to change it um, as long as it falls within the range of the sensor you could do that. Um, we're going to leave it at 25 so we're going to just hit discard changes. Uh, you can also go through and change your alarms where you want these things to go off um, from increasing to decreasing, non latching, latching. So all your options are right there on your sensor. So to do the calibration, you're going to go into calibrate. Um, even though there's one sensor you still have to select the sensor. If there was multiple you would select which one you're doing first. Um, this is a combustible sensor propane. You have the option to do just the zero calibration or the full calibration. Today we're doing the full calibration. Um, I've already got my O2 um, span gas or zero gas uh, connected to the the uh, sensor. So I'm going to hit initiate. It's going to start the process. Apply zero gas. Turn on my regulator. You'll hear the gas coming on there. And it's going to go through the process. You can see the last calibration, it stores that. You can go back in and look at each calibration um, on this. So you can kind of see if there's a trend, if your uh, sensor is drifting more and more, that could be an indication that it's possibly going out. Um, these do have um, a fairly long sensor life, uh, three year warranty and five year uh, sensor life expectancy. So, um, but it is nice to see that that uh, historical trend data so that it's nice that it saves that for you so you can see the process um, if this had drifted um, it would say possibly two percent LEL um, and then you would it would be changing or not changing but once the zero uh, calibration was done it would change it back to zero so in this case this one has not drifted at all on the zero side and that's why you see on the right hand side where it says zero percent LEL that's not going to change um, if your instrument was reading 2%, um, you would see 2% even if you put the oxygen to it, but once the calibration was complete for the zero, it would then change that 2% to zero. It's about the same as the transmitter as far as length of time. Um, you can see as it just passed the zero, zero calibration passed. I like to wait until it says apply span gas before I change over and turn off my zero. I'm now switching over to our propane in this case, uh, which is a 0.6% concentration or 25% or LEL. Um, and this time you should see um, this thing climb uh, and it'll set it at 25. So you can see off to the right hand side there, um, which is also on the transmitter display, you can see what it's currently reading. And the uh, the bar that shows the progress. Uh, we're currently at 23%. So um, we have done this one a couple times. Um, I had set it back to 25. So this one should get pretty close to 25 and stay there. Um, and then once it's done, it'll set it at 25. So coming along. Um, you will see, like I said, just like on the transmitter, it's not going to go through the complete time bar it may get 30% or sometimes 50% before it changes. Looks like it's pretty stable there at 26. So we should be seeing here pretty shortly um, a calibration pass on the span side and asking us to remove the gas. 
and these vary. Sometimes uh, it goes fairly quickly, sometimes it goes a little bit longer. Um, there we go with our pass. I'm going to turn off the gas, remove span gas. We should get another check mark. Uh, basically, what it's doing now is saving the data. So once it's done, um, saving the data. One thing you do want to not do is um, you don't want to disconnect until you've got all good check marks. So it's basically saving um, the data right now. If you were to disconnect before this was done, um, you would probably get a span fault or a cal fault. So you want to see all check marks um, and you want to see a pass with a date on the bottom before you disconnect uh, your Bluetooth. So we got the check mark still waiting. You still don't want to disconnect um, until you get this message here. So you can see span cal calibration passed. Uh, you can view the cal report. 26 found, 25 left. Uh, the previous calibration was 93 because we had done a, a previous one today. Sensor health is good. And estimated next cal 33. You can go back, done. We're now done with the calibration. You can view last report again if you want. Go back, and now you're safe to disconnect. Shows your live readings. If you go to your connections, if you wanted to disconnect, you can disconnect. It'll also disconnect if you just walk away, it times out eventually. So it's fine to do it that way too. But the main thing is that you wait until the calibration is 100% complete and you get that message. If you disconnect before that, uh, you will get a calibration fault. And that completes our process for calibrating a sensor through the Bluetooth XS Connect app. Thank you.